Oh, hey, do you know what week it is? It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Let's go ask some students about their favorite teachers. They're reading. I don't know if we should bother them. We had to see this. Is Mason in here? Don't you want to interview me? <laughs> no. no. Hi. Hi. Thank you. We can shut the door. So, we're here with Mason. Mason, who is your favorite teacher? Uh, my favorite teacher, that will have to be the teacher that I've had for four years, Matt McClendon. Uh, he has influenced my career, and he has been truly a great mentor and a friend. Which McClendon would win in a fight? Matt McClendon. Mike McClendon, he's, he's, he's all about, you know, I'm going to play it strategically. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to use government. But Matt McClendon? Matt McClendon has met the tough guys. Matt McClendon has been the tough guy. Plus, the beard's longer. So, like, if we're, like, testing, like, powers, like... Red beard McClendon, it's all the way. But I feel like the, the, the long beard would be a downfall because he could just get it pulled. You'd think that, but if you were to pull, there might be a chance of pulling out enraging Red beard McClendon, and we all know what he gets like when he's mad. So, Mad McClendon, Mad Matt McClendon, we've all heard about it. It might end in a disaster for Mike. So, why did you become a teacher? Because I love to read, and kids are okay. Was that your only reason? Yeah, I love books. I want to talk about books with kids. Other than yourself, who is your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher? Someone I've had was my 12th grade AP English teacher, Mrs. Cates. Why? Because she would pick really interesting books, and that was the first time I read The Bell Jar, which I currently teach with my 11th graders. It sucks. We don't need you anymore. Oh, hey, by the way, we're not putting this in. Why? I'm going to just walk down the middle. If you could shout out one teacher right now, which teacher would you shout out? Um, Chris Whirling. If you could shout out one teacher right now, which teacher would you shout out? Uh, Mr. McLinden. Okay, goodbye. If you could shout out one teacher right now, which teacher would you shout out? <laughs> Mr. Kilmer. Okay, goodbye. Shout out one teacher. 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 Mrs. Swinford. Good choice. What if? What if? What if? Can you come here? If you could shout out one teacher, which teacher would it be? Mike McLennan. Good choice. Donna, Donna, Donna. If you could shout out one teacher, what teacher would it be? Um, can I do two? Because, sure. Uh, Mr. Sharp and uh, Mr. Schoon. Uh, probably Mr. Goss because he's an OG and he's the best builder. The best All right, All right. Well, thank you. Mr. Roach, too. Bert, how does it feel being in the last month of school? Feels pretty good. What teacher um, is your favorite or impacted you the most? Um, I don't know if he's a teacher, but I would say Baldo because he's, uh, he's very a supportive. Teacher. Look at you. There he is now. He's Baldy. Hey. 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 Now those were the students' most impactful teachers. Thank you so much for coming. See you next time. Maybe we gotta reshoot that. <laughs> Why? All right. I've been John, the cameraman, and this has been Benjamin Keaton, the interviewer, and we'll see y'all next Teacher Appreciation Week. Have a great weekend. And welcome back to Zoo Crew. Last episode, we talked about polar bears and Mexican gray wolves. 
This episode, two other members of Zoo Crew, Aaliyah and Polar, will be hosting the rest of this episode. Hey everyone, it's me, Polar, and Aaliyah. Hi. And for our first animal, we have the, the sexy, sexy shrimp. These shrimp can grow up to 13 millimeters in length and are usually a light brown, but they can also be a green color. The sexy shrimp is known for being small and colorful. That sexy shrimp was definitely pretty cool. Now for our next animal, we will have the rainbow boa. Rainbow boas tend to live 10 to 20 years and weigh from 0.9 to 1.4 kilograms or two to three pounds. These boas are not venomous and are native to South America. Whoa, that was a really cool snake. I know our producer's gonna hate watching that and editing it. But luckily we uh, are able to have one more animal. We have the, the dog, dog face puffer fish. <laughs> the dog face puffer fish lacks scales unlike many other kinds of fish. They possess outer and inner layers of skin which allows them to inflate and deflate, doubling their size when they are scared or provoked. I really wish it was safe to pet, they look so soft. Now sadly, that was our last animal. So, we will see you next time with the birds. Signing off. Bye guys. Bye bye. I'm Jackson Baker, and about two years ago, I created a radio and TV uh, short film, as we would call it, um, by the name of Rage Monster that instantly became a cult classic within the radio and TV community. Dude, what are you raging about? Bro, this stupid game, I die. I'm never gonna play it again, it's so dumb. Dude, I, that, dude, that's so dumb to range about. I bet I can beat it. Ah! And now personally, I despise this. This was terrible on my part. A, a terrible film. But everyone loved it. Everyone wanted to be part of this. And I tried to make it again, but then we got quarantined. When's the release date of Rage Monster 2? Um, soon. I can't tell you. It's, it's coming out soon, though. Uh, and then we got back in quarantine my junior year, and I decided I'm going to make Rage Monster 2. But it didn't work because as soon as I was about to release it, after releasing a trailer... Ah! Yo, wait! Hey! Yo! Calm down! Calm down! Rage Monster's back, guys! The Rage Monster's no! back! No! Home. No! 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 We got shut down again. So, you know, I'm here today with with a few new people, you know, not not Jacob Miramontes from the original, but we're gonna remaster this. I hate this game so much! Jack- Jackson! Ja what's wrong? Why are you so involved in rage today?
you know, you know what? I'm not done. Nathan, how are you doing that? You just eat the apples. Oh. I guess I'll go find a different game to play. What? Sorry, I was too busy winning. Here are some 10 random facts about the Friday show. There have been 56 events that have been live streamed, including football. The more you know. McClendon has said the word white balance 58 times. Oh wait, wrong McClendon. The more you know. Brendan has talked about a couch 14 times. The more you know. There have been 16 items broken during the Friday show. The more you know. There are 112 segments revolving around food. The more you know. Charlie has winked and blown a kiss 28 times. The more you know. There have been about 140 Friday shows with an average total run time of 44 hours. The more you know. The Friday show started in 2018 and ended in 2022. The less you know. Now, how many times do you think McClendon has mentioned he's worked at ABC or Windy City Live? Now, McClendon has, uh, he pretty much says it every day, multiple times a day. In fact, if you're in his intro class, you know it is the main part of everything he focuses on. We used to have a bingo sheet uh, every, every time he says it or relates to it, and uh, it's the easiest game I've ever played. The more you know. And that was 10 random facts about the Friday show. Hello everybody, welcome to In The Way With Trey. Today I'm here with Jackson Skinner and today we're gonna to be talking about the Bears draft picks. Honestly, I think that their number one need is receiver. I agree, and especially, I mean, after drafting Kyler Gordon and Brisker. I, even then, like before drafting Brisker, you still had George Pickens on the board, which I honestly thought they were going to draft. But I like what they did with the depth. I don't, the the running back pick. <laughs> I was just about to get to that. Andre Booth was actually still on the board when Kyler Gordon was picked. You know that? So what, I, I would have chosen um, Andre Booth actually, Andrew Booth, I'm sorry. But what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I I like having Tyree Kill. <laughs> yeah, I was watching. I just watched Tyree Kill highlights. I was, I was watching time. Tyree Kill highlights during the draft. I was like, okay. And then the Jets <laughs> drafted a corner, and then the Bills drafted a corner. I'm like, they're scared. Okay, hi, my name is Caitlin. If you're not friends with me or you don't know me, you probably don't know that I'm honestly an idiot and I don't know anything about naming states. So today, I have a map of all the 50 states. I have my crowd here and my cameraman to help me name some states. Um, so we're gonna do that. Let's go.
LHS. As some of you may know, this past weekend was the 2022 Met Gala. And so today, me, Jacinda, is here with Bella and we are going to rate some outfits. We're going to give them um, slay or nay. Nay or slay. I like that one better. Okay, so first up, we have Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. A this nay. is a nay. Okay. okay, for one, the theme is well, the gilded, gilded what? Gilded glamour. Mm. What is this? This is giving nice. like I was so 20s, boring. Like, it was like she. Why went is out, he wearing like, sunglasses inside? I like Pete Davidson, I don't get the hype. Can we stop inviting TikTokers to the Met yes. Gala? That is so bogus. Mm -hmm. They are not really real celebrities, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, depends. Be Cardi B always, always eats at the Met Gala. The ruby dress was amazing. The um the Catholic Church theme. I'm saying she was so Cardi good. Cardi B and Blake Lively slay every Met Gala. Every Met Gala. Cardi B's never met. She has the body. She has the face to pull off anything. Um, absolutely slayed. Yeah. Kylie Jenner. This is like a like a letter to you. What are you thinking? Why are you wearing a snapback? It's like you're like going to a wedding, but you're wearing a t-shirt yes. with your dress, but you have yeah. a snapback on. Is this like, are you getting married at like the halftime of a basketball game? I'm just, I'm not understanding. I, it's a the, wedding dress, but It with would a be pretty without the sleeves, Yeah, honestly. it's a wedding dress. It still doesn't even match the theme, but like. No. Also, I honestly, I think that black hair doesn't go with this outfit. No. So absolutely nay. So the one that Bella um, really wanted to talk about is one Miss Blake Lively and her Queen outfit. Queen slays every year. Every year slay, 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 slay. Her dress, absolutely phenomenal. She slays. I think that- If you say she it's slay, not, I don't hear It's her. not ugly, but it's not anything special. That's my opinion. It's not anything special? There's Look nothing- Look at this dress, the detail. It's a, it's a pretty hair, dress, but earrings. it's not memorable. I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna be sitting there and be like, Blake Lively looks so good at the Met Gala 2022. So Blake Lively was um, Bella's favorite Met Gala pick. Mine is actually, she's not even a celebrity. She was one of the reporters, and I think she's like in a movie or something. Her name is Genesis Surreal. She looks so beautiful. This is such a beautiful outfit. Oh, yeah. She's literally a reporter, and she outdid the celebrities that are being literally paid to show up to this. Yeah. This is such a good dress. I absolutely love it. Her, her hair and makeup fit the theme perfectly. I'm an in love with this outfit. Yeah, she slayed. She looks super good. She slayed. Oh. Yeah, uh, honestly, overall, it was really disappointing. Yeah, it was. There was not really any outfits that I was like yeah, obsessed it was basic. with. Yeah, Nobody stuck to the theme, which I know they never do, except for in like 2019 when they had the Catholic Church theme and everyone hit that on point. Honestly, I think that my gal has been going downhill every year. Yeah. So. But Hillary Clinton was there, so. But Hillary Clinton was there. If you're main into appearance, that. Main appearance. Also, one more thing. Stop inviting TikTokers to the Met Gala. They are not real celebrities. And with that, me and Bella are signing off. Well, everything's burning down. Um, so you know what? We've had Peggle, we need to have a Weezer segment. I'm Tyler Zostek, and it's Weez to meet you. Weez to meet you. Uh, I'm with the LHS Weezer department. I uh, got a couple questions. Here. So, say it ain't so. Oh, uh, Weezer? Yeah, song, dude, you get it. The Blue Album or Pinkerton? Blue Album? Let's go. This man right here, best Weezer fan in the whole high school. No biggie. Don't even listen to Weezer that often, but I'm a biggie. Our segment is better. I don't care what they're recording. What? That is? I need one. Wait for me. I don't want to be abandoned. Do you know what happens to people who get abandoned in the high school after hours? They go up upstairs. Whoa. Rare Mason cam? Dude. Dude, they're on the Weezer cam. Weezer cam. Weezer cam. <laughs> What's your thoughts on Weezer, young man? What's your thoughts? I love Weezer. Why? What? Tell us why you like Weezer. No, don't touch this. Don't touch it. I love Weezer. Hey. Hey, if it if it isn't if it isn't Lowell's biggest Weez head, right here. I you might Weezer. 
get out of here. <laughs> I hate you. What are you, what are you asking? Uh, uh, totally not questions about Weezer or anything. Um, uh, why do you like Weezer? Why do you not like Weezer? Why do you not like Weezer? Ah, uh, you know, I just, it's Weezer, man. Like, it's Weezer, man. Could you elaborate on that statement? Could you, you please, know, could you please elaborate? The, the names of their albums are really kind of stupid. There's the blue one, and then there's the white one. It's cursed. We're cursed. Whoa. This is riveting. <laughs> I am here with Lowell's biggest wheeze head, Ethan Andrew Pereira. I hate wheeze. Why? Cringe. Like you. You heard it here, folks. Biggest loser in Lowell. Make sure to make fun of him, too. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah, I have a lot to say about Weezer. First off, I want to say that Ethan Pereira is the biggest loser in school. I just heard it right here in the little theater. Secondly, Weezer even knows that Ethan Pereira is the biggest loser in school, and that's why he's down there putting on his jacket right now. Thirdly, anybody that likes Weezer can come meet me and Ethan Pereira in the little theater, and we're going to show them what losers are all about. All right. Opinions on Weezer, first oh, and foremost. Am I allowed to? Oh, you're filming me. This is Yeah. Okay, so are you taking like a poll of answer? I'm trying to figure out a poll of the Yeah. I mean, I grew up with some answer. I was, I was very slow on Van Weezer's new album, but it's good. Like the, the Van Weezer? The one that's like, on my favorite song, there's no way. That's such that's a Van Weezer? And then, I think so. Yeah, they're for their new album. I guess. I yeah. Guy, so and then the like, Uh, Pinkerton? Uh, no, not Pinkerton. Most of our covers. Yeah. Yeah, I met them. I met all four of them. Did you really? No. Actually, no, not My husband did. In, in the, well, really? We them at Firefly Festival when we used to work for it. But they, yeah. Why would Weezer do that? <laughs> yeah, River, I forget what his last name is, River, Weezer. He's like a genius. I do yeah. love Weezer, clearly. Let's go. I think you're the first actual Weezer fan we found. <laughs> we finally found Weezer in Lowell High School. There he is. I found a racist fan on the ground. Whoa. Here you go.